In this video, I'd like to talk to you about an event known as sudden death. And everybody's been familiar or aware of this. It's not uncommon now to read in the newspaper where a young high school athlete is going up to make a layup in the game and he or she does so only to fall dead on the, on the court. Or a collegiate athlete makes an outstanding uh, tackle after which they find him still lying on the ground only to realize that he's died or uh, an outstanding uh, track runner who finishes the event and a few steps after the finish line they drop over on the track to die uh, of a condition known as sudden death. Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Bartosz of Proactive Wellness in uh, an injury center in Danville, Illinois, and I'd like to share with you some information that unfortunately is not well known amongst the population. Most of these conditions are a result of a lack of one of the most important critical minerals in the body, and that's known as magnesium. It's been estimated through the research that over 80 to 90 percent of the population is deficient in this mineral, and it's critically important along with potassium in the, in the function, the nerve function of the heart in particular. What happens then is that magnesium is lost through sweating. Now think about this. You have these athletes now that are continually practicing, that are, that are working out, that are having their events and they're sweating and sometimes profusely, especially if it's in the fall with some of these football games or in hot arenas or whatever it might be. As they're sweating, they continually lose this magnesium and it's getting lower and lower and lower in their system and it's not being replaced. Unfortunately, the action that's taken in most circles is that the athlete is given a potassium-laden liquid to drink in order to replace the potassium. However, that is not the answer. You see, magnesium, uh, the amount of magnesium in the body determines a, a, the amount of a particular type of enzyme, and that amount of enzyme in the body determines how much potassium is in that body. So you can drink, you can add all the potassium that you want to the body, but if the magnesium levels are not correct, then it's all in vain. It's not going to help. So there was research that was done by Dr. Carla Sueta, and she found that there were various types of ventricular arrhythmias, and they were reduced, they were improved or bettered, from 53 to 76% by the ingestion or the, the introduction of, ma of magnesium. 53 to 76% of the arrhythmias were, were totally uh, cured by the ingestion of magnesium. And that's very, very important. Now, if you're interested in getting your magnesium tested, even if you have a, a youngster uh, who's athletic, and, and you know, today in our world, these young people go from one sport to the next sport to the next sport to the next sport without ever having any type of uh, rest or relaxation between the sports. And frankly, the, the, the uh, typical American diet is, is atrocious to say the least. And many of these athletes are eating cheap and emptied carbohydrates, uh, processed foods, which are all devoid of the mineral of magnesium. So you can see that as they continue to do this, their condition worsens and worsens and worsens. Now, if you're wanting to find out about your magnesium level, you can go to your doctor. Now, this is what I want to warn you about, though. Many of the doctors will order what's called a serum magnesium blood test. And frankly, that's one of the worst, it's one of the poorest tests that you can have in order to determine your level of magnesium because it shows less than 1% of the amount of magnesium that you have in your body. So let me recommend to you that if you are having your magnesium checked, you ask your physician to perform an RBC minerals test. RBC minerals test. It's also known as the elemental analysis in packed erythrocytes. Elemental analysis and packed erythrocytes. The erythrocytes are basically the red blood cells that carry the oxygen to the cells. Now, when you have this test done, this test will literally test the amount of minerals that you have within the cell, and some of which are going to be not only the magnesium, but it will show you the levels of manganese, molybdenum, potassium, selenium, vanadium, and zinc as well. It's very, very important. 
uh, to, to have this type of test done if you're concerned about it. This Having this test done will also go a long way in helping you to prevent uh, perhaps a developing heart attack from ever occurring because now you're going to be adding that magnesium to your system. Now, you might ask, what are some of the symptoms? Well, they are very general, but indeed, there are some to watch out for. Some of the ones that you can experience if you have a deficiency in magnesium would, of course, be back and neck pain. Now, I'm not talking about the about the typical back or neck pain that you might have after looking up for a while or bending over. Remember, much of this magnesium is lost during an exertive activity. So, um, and when you're perspiring, you're losing that. So these athletes might be complaining of sore necks or sore backs uh, during a game that's uh, not, not related to the activity, but actually when they're standing around or resting or they might experience muscle spasms, or you may do the same. Uh, some of the other uh, symptoms might be anxiety, or panic disorders, or fatigue, uh, you know, outstanding, um, uh, extra special type of fatigue, if you will. Eye twitching, you know, the twitching of the eye, how, how it flutters a little bit. It could be vertigo, uh, migraine headaches as well. Those are just some of the symptoms that you might be experiencing if you have a magnesium deficiency. And if these are occurring or recurring in you, it would behoove you to go to your doctor and have the test to see what your levels are. Because again, this could be a problem that is developing over time that with which finding out its presence, you could totally eliminate it. What are some of the best ways to do so? Well, frankly, the best way to, um, to increase a magnesium deficiency, uh, to resolve, I should say, a magnesium deficiency, is to eat whole foods, seeds, nuts, vegetables. Eat whole foods. And if you need some kind of um, consultation, visit with your doctor and see after the blood tests what types of magnesium, and I'm, I'm very... Uh, I want you to understand this. There are different types of magnesium. Not all, not all are what you may need, but there are some that you might specifically need. So have that discussion with your doctor. Sit down and find out what you're deficient in and what type of supplement that you can be taking that will help to address this deficiency while you go ahead and start eating uh, better choices of food. I hope this has been of benefit to you. By, by incorporating some of this information, you could, you'll do well in avoiding any types of catastrophes, averting these types of things in, uh, in your life or perhaps in the life of somebody that you love. If you found this information um, beneficial, I do invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Proactive Wellness. And as always, if you have any questions or any comments, we do invite you to... Uh, to um, Make those known to us in the box that's below the video. And until the next video, God bless.